So I imagine here they're giving you your, okay, so focusing in. So on your first pick, first pack, what are you looking for here? Uh, I'm looking, well, some removal, uh, colorless cards, just identifying what the, what the bombs are, if anything. Here, I mean, it's basically Volt Charge Grim Affliction, um, but like, there's a bunch of good black in the pack, so, and like, I think Volt Charge and Grim Affliction are pretty close. I like Grim Affliction a little bit more usually, but since there is a lot of black, I just went with uh, the Volt Charge. I mean, you have Reaper of Shield Red in there also, which is quite good. Okay. So I figured that uh, by sending a bunch of black down to my left to clear up the uh, a red or green or just whatever for my second pick or for my second pack. Okay, so your your the cards are pretty close on power level, and then uh, you decide to uh, send a good signal. You know, hey neighbor, get into black. You know. Yeah. Then here there's uh, there's over menial, which is pretty mediocre. Arterial wise, which is pretty decent. I, it's a uh, does a lot of damage. One of the one of the better cards. I don't, there's also a Triumph of the Hordes, which I don't really I haven't played with it at all yet, but I don't think it's very good. It just okay. isn't strike. I mean, Apostle's Blessing is okay, but again, you just another red removal spell. So just you kept me on track right there. Yeah, and both those cards are splashable also. So even if red doesn't end up being your primary primary color or whatnot, you can still splash. Yeah, them I can the deck. I can still play them. And here we've got, uh, there's Vulture, Scourge, Mike, and some Spell Spring. Uh, not much red, actually. There's, uh, like, Razor Swine, which is it's fine. Uh, like, I'm not really sure how much I like him yet, but, I mean, he ended up being pretty good in, in my deck. I mean, Wizard Inspector is also pretty good, but I want to stay out of black at this point. So it's basically uh, the Swine and uh, Remember the Fallen. Remember the Fallen's a, quite a good card. Because, I mean, it's basically like Morbid Plunder and just source of card advantage. But I didn't want to commit to a second color, and so I just took the Swine. I've always been fond of the Swine. The first strike with Infect opens up a lot of opportunities. Yeah, you can have a bunch of combat tricks. And here there's I mean, the Green Chancellor, which I don't think is playable unless you're already in green. Even then, yeah. he's pretty bad. That Ogre Menial is decent. Uh, Blighted Agent is, is pretty good. Because uh, like, I mean, I've got I've got the uh, Razor Swine already, but I mean, at Ogre Menial is also. Uh, what do you think of the emulating uh, emulating Soul Leader? Yeah, he's he's fine. I don't I don't really like him for except in, in a very aggressive deck. So okay. I just shipped him along. I mean, you've got another Apostle's Blessing and another Swine. So it's pretty clear the red's open, and, it, and I could see the black was drying up and. Yes. Uh, blue also didn't seem like it was very open, so I, it, it seemed like it was in a in a good position. And you know, not having committed to a second color at all, I'd be able to keep my options open for the second pack in, in case I opened up a, a sweet card that I could play. Yeah. So you like to, you really like to stay open to your second color as long as possible. Yeah. I, I, I want to be able to read the table. I, I figure that I, I feel that I've got a lot more. I I can if I can read the table then I'm going to have a more successful draft and I'm not going to try and force an archetype because it just it can work out sometimes but other times I just I'd rather take what's coming and here there's uh, Alloy Mirror or Razor Spine and Alloy Mirror is okay but I've got a bunch of Infect guys at this point and um, if I can land in green which there's a, a, a reasonable amount of green in, uh, being passed if I can get a lot of green Infect in pack 3 then and then I should be good. And after pack one, I've got a lot of a lot of red cards and really no second color at all. I mean, Viridian Betrayers is, it's is fine, okay. but it's only one card, and it doesn't have to force you that direction. Yeah, I, it's, it doesn't it doesn't commit me to anything. And uh, unfortunately, the second pack uh, didn't really go so well for me. Uh, <laughs> what were you kind of looking for out of the second pack? Uh, I was looking for. Uh, Rot Wolves, Burly and Pure, um, Blight, Blight Widow, and uh, some uh, like Unnatural Predation, Mirror and Metal. And, but I opened Tezzeret, which was like, the worst thing <laughs> to see because you know it's the best card in the format. But I'm, it's, and 
it's not something that I can actually play. Yeah, you don't actually have any artifacts really at all to play at this point, and you're, it's completely not in your colors. Yeah, it was just really bad. Did you think about it at all? No, not really. I mean, it's it just it does absolutely nothing for me. Whereas uh, Copper Carapace works out pretty well with uh, with Razor Swines because uh, it makes them harder. To, it's pretty easy to to kill a Razor Swine. Uh, when it's attacking, if, you know, right. you don't have any. If you if the guy attacking with it doesn't have any uh, tricks to to back it up with, so I just ship that along. And sp passing spread the sickness makes it so that it, there's a, there are a lot of people drafting black at the table, which should clear things up pretty well for me in fact. I mean, there's the rot wolf and there's the burn, burn the impure, but I got to take burn over the rot wolf is not really the question. A good good removal for in the the color that I'm in. And Rubble's, Rubble's good, but it's just not on the same level. So, uh, do you tend to be kind of greedy in your picks, or are you kind of a, a really conservative, kind of try to keep it all together kind of person? Uh, it will go back and forth sometimes, but uh, most of the time I'm pretty conservative. Like, I don't like splashing. Uh, sometimes I'll just go into, I'll, I'll force an archetype, but that's rarely the case. Like, I'll do that on Mono every now and then, but most of the time I just stay open. And I think I benefit more from just reading the table. And then here we've got uh, Piston Sledge, uh, Strandwalker, Chant and Sphere of the Sins. And right now with uh, three Ogre Menials, my, my decks, and three Razor Swines, my, I, I can gum up the ground pretty well. And uh, either of those equipment would work out, but but Strandwalker, I think, adds more resiliency to uh, against an, like an aggro white deck, for example. And that's because it comes with a creature, and uh, it's not as difficult to move around. Uh, well, yeah, sort of, but uh, you can also deal with flyers. Uh, if I can just play okay, that, and then right. pull, and then start attacking with an ogre menial. And here, here we've got uh, nothing really too great. I mean, there's. There's a green sun zenith, but I don't have any green creatures. And then there's uh, septic rats, but you know I'm not black. I don't really want to be black because I've cast so much black, and which means it's just asking for trouble. I just won't get any cards of that color. Right. So I figured that it is either uh, Acre Well Spring to combine with uh, uh, Arterialize or just take another Strandwalker. And I figured that Strandwalker would be a little bit better. Not a. These last few picks haven't been very exciting because Strandwalker is pretty expensive and not really what I want to be doing. And here's just the same pick. Like, I can't use Ogre Resistor. I, I could abandon the Infect theme uh, and the Resistor becomes a fine card, but then I just have a bunch of do-nothing four drops that don't really work well together. And Strandwalker actually makes uh, some of the, the, the smaller Infect creatures um, you know, actually good. Like uh, Flintstermite and Light Mama, that sort of thing. I didn't feel that uh, taking the Seer of the Suns would work out too well, but since I'd be able to... I don't have two colors already, so I don't need to splash a third. Here there's uh, Galvanoth but I don't, and Tangle Hulk, but those are all both slow. And with three Strandwalkers, I didn't, I didn't see a need for for taking another five drop. The Galvanoth is, doesn't really have that many cards that I can flip over to get a free uh, a free spell, so I just took the Infect Creature and try and cut up cut it off. Yeah. Now, do you find that Galvanoth is a card that you can draft and kind of build around, or is it most of the time just just looking at it for the body? Uh, most of the time it's just like a, a medium-sized value creature that you can sometimes get a card off of. It's not. It's usually mediocre. And, I mean, it's not really something that you, that you can uh, build off of because you're, I mean, you're playing whatever removal you have. And in when you're drafting uh, just Besieged and and Psalm Psalm, then you'd get in the first pack, so you'd be able to, you'd have the opportunity to take more, more instance in in uh, the, the last two packs that you see. But since you see it in the second pack, you you have one pack where you don't you don't know that you're going to get it going off. And even then, you you're not guaranteed to draw it. And there's just a lot of things that have to go right for it to be. Good. Now, as you're fanning through your cards here, you're looking at uh, in between rounds there. You're still pretty much just red, and you're looking at, you know, you might be able to do this for a second color. You're thinking just a little bit more towards the black for the Flesh of Mines. Yeah. But not it, for it's, sure. It wasn't something that I that I was happy with because, you know, I, I, I passed a lot of black in pack one and two. And here there's Barrage Ogre, but um, 
I don't have any artifacts, and except for Strandwalkers, which I don't want to sacrifice, and Plague Stinger's a, a pretty good creature. And Flunser, and I've already got two Flunser Mites, so I figured that there, there's a small chance that I might wield a Contagious Limb, but with the way Pack 2 went with me seeing no Wolf, Blight Widows, or Scourge Servants, it was unlikely. And so I just went with the best card. Just go for the gamble and, and end up not working out. And here we've got a Galvanic Blast, which is pretty easy to take. Perilous Smear is okay, but Galvanic Blast is quite quite good. Just, just uh, cheap removal. Yeah, and, and with a Galvanic Blast, all you care about is doing the two damage. If you have Metalcraft, it's a bonus. Yeah, I mean, I ended up uh, losing this round, but um, it, where I I managed to uh, to have Metalcraft when I cast it. But yeah, I mean, four damage for one mana is very hard to. Uh, I mean, it, you just generate so much tempo that way because they're spending their entire turn to play something, and you're using a fraction of your man of your turn to get rid of it. And here, this uh, this pack is pretty terrible. Like, there's a gold mirror, clone shell, and Argenta armor, and a Moriak replica. None of which I'm really happy with. But um, I figured that Argenta armor is going to be useful against certain matchups and or cards that uh, my deck would normally have trouble with, like for example, a slow dinosaur deck. Just the when I have a when I when I have a, also have a slow draw. And it gives you an opportunity to get back into the game by making some of your guys buff and kind of yeah. I mean, some going. some decks will just lose to that kind of card. Like if they did, if they don't have any removal and they're like white green or white blue, that sort of thing. Okay. And here we've got a. a Black Cleave Goblin and uh, uh, Black Cleave Cliffs, and I figured that since I have so much, so little uh, uh, black, but I also have uh, three two drops, I'd want to take. I'd want the mana fixing as opposed to a Black Cleave Goblin, which doesn't really. It's it's not really a great creature, uh, and I've got a bunch of four drops already, so I didn't figure it, it's it the role that it normally plays in a in the classic green black infect decks wouldn't, wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't be able to mimic that and here again it's just like I'm getting to completely cut off like there's panic spellball man nothing else and it's basically a, a draw a card card for you and then you can you know it has some value if you get to the right opportunity yeah if someone leaves just one blocker back then I can use it to squeak through the last points of damage or something along those lines. Uh, do you consider most of the spell bombs mostly for the draw card ability? Um, well, they, they serve a few purposes. Um, it, I mean, it really depends yeah, on the deck. It can just to be for a placeholder for metal crafts if you need an artifact to play, and their, their ability is usually pretty well relevant except for the black spell bomb, which is mostly just a cycle. But, uh, yeah, their, their ability is... It's like less than half of what you use it for. So that looks like... Uh, Looks like pretty much the draft has, uh, went there. And uh, we want to thank the uh, Game Academy Online for uh, sponsoring this segment uh, where we get to kind of walk through your, your draft with you. So 